A warm regards to you all. I just came back from India, fresh from my vacation. It's been hot and humid at New Delhi, the capital city of India. And you can see here, the kids are smiling. They had an unexpected day off at school. Great, isn't it? Maybe not so great. Because they had their holidays because of heavy air pollution at New Delhi, which is also causing huge smog hovering across the city. Even the kids were given anti-pollution masks. Such is the sad state of India. So as a data scientist and an Indian national, I'm not here to tell 100 incredible things about India. I'm here to suggest how we could use reliable data transparency and social media to spread awareness and drive actions across India. If you look at the history of climate change, there are a lot of environmentalists and climate activists who did a lot of great effort in fighting with the climate change. Paul Hawken, a leading climate activist and an environmentalist, has given us 100 most substantial solutions to combat the climate change. His project Drawdown comprises seven categories that includes energy, food, educating women and girls, which is super important, transport, roads, and cities. We all know Greta Thunberg, right? But 25 years ago, we already heard Severin. She's a 12-year-old kid then. 25 years ago, she spoke passionately and credibly at the same United Nations. She silenced the whole world for five minutes about losing her future, if only we had listened to her. Moving to the East, if you look at the history into the East, when compared to Western Europe and Northern America, the climate change agenda is always linked to the economic growth and political development of the nation. However, there are quite a few people who did a great job in climate change agenda. One among them is late Aya, Mr. Ramalwar, who was considered as a green crusader and messiah of organic revolution. He has given us a lot about organic farming and saving the ecosystem. So based on the scientific evidence and ever more occurrence of natural calamities like floods and cyclones, it is clear that the next 18 months is going to be critical in dealing with the climate change agenda. So as an Indian, I would like to underline a few factors that pulls India behind the rest of the nation. One among them is urbanization and growing population. So you all know how big is India. India is competing with China in terms of population growth. So with 200 million more city dwellers expected by 2030, keeping the emissions under control is truly remarkable. And don't forget, two thirds of India is yet to be built. So if you look at the urbanization, that is one of the main stressful factors among India. Next comes sanitation. Sanitation is another urgent issue in India. You know what? More than 50% people in India have access to a mobile phone than to a toilet in India. I'm really sad to say this fact, but that is a truth. That is as per UN reports. Going on to rivers. Rivers have always been the reverent appeal with the religious values of India. But with the advent of industrialization and pollution, we are dumping more than 3,000 million liters of untreated sewage into all the rivers across India. So that is a lot, that is massive. And we have made the holy river Ganga as the sixth most polluted river in the world. Moving on to the cyclones and the floodings. This is one such picture from flooding. So the massive destruction caused by the cyclone Varda in 2016 and Gaja in 2018 has resulted in sh shocking headlines worldwide. But unfortunately, they have done a very little to impact the climate change in India. 
So what do we do? What could be the possible solutions? If India is having two thirds of India is susceptible to floods and one eighth is prone to droughts, then what can we do? What could be the possible solutions that we could have? Educating women and girls. We call it Mother India, but we are holding them back. Educating a woman is actually crucial in bringing down the population growth, and it also helps the sustainability. So there is a quote. You educate a boy, you educate one person. You educate a girl, you educate a nation. That is, of course, true. So if you look at the, the numbers in social media, 29% of social media users in India are women. Just 24% of the whole Facebook users in India are female. You know what? There is a village in Uttar Pradesh. It is called Madora. It has banned the unmarried women from using mobile phones. Internet is considered as one of the basic human rights by the United Nations. But look at what's going on in Madora. Such is the sad state of women in India right now. My mother is a school teacher, but unfortunately, she doesn't have a broader access to online platforms. So a planet 50-50 is all we need. That is going to be crucial in fighting the climate change in the coming years. And this should be seriously noted down in India. Moving on to water management. In India, now we have less than 1,000 cubic per person, 1,000 cubic meter of water per person. Half of the annual precipitation lies in the 15 rain-soaked days in India. That is why we have droughts and floods as a part and parcel of our lives. As a data guy, for me, data management is really needed in terms of good water management. I would like to quote two examples here. Two successful projects, well supported by the World Bank, Hydrology 1 and Hydrology 2. Hydrology 1 in Maharashtra and Hydrology 2 in Punjab and Himachal Pradesh. So what they did is they started sharing the water data online. So what it did, this level of transparency has enabled them to share the water with ease. On top of it, the pressure from the social media enabled the people to put pressure on those who are in power. It, I come from a state, Tamil Nadu, where water sharing has always been an issue over the past few decades. Speaking about water, I would like to take you all to the holy river Ganges. Bhagavadi Dayadere Neeru Matraksanoham Bhagavadi Dayadere Neeru Matraksanoham Have you heard this song? Neither do I before preparing for this talk. <laughs> so the National Mission for Cleaning Ganga was launched in 2015. It had seven schemes, one among them is this song. You look at Ganga, this is the state of the river right now. They tried all the traditional ways, like conducting rallies. They, uh, they did all the advertisements on TVs and radios. But they failed to reach 265 million YouTube users in India. That is where you need to go, right? But they have failed to reach 241 million Facebook users, 71 million Instagram users, and 35 million Twitter users in India. So India is trying to become a superpower in space technology. We have launched Chandrayaan 2 recently, right? So that's good, yeah? And India is again trying to become a superpower in nuclear technology as well, along with space technology. So that is good. But they need to realize that there is something more than the disputes at border. They need to realize that they need to use the wealth and abundance of the social media users. 
they are not using the 326 million social media users across India. That is where they need to look at. And what are we missing? We are missing a key link called collaboration. According to Hawken, all is connected. No one thing can change by itself. We all should act collaboratively in order to make a climate change. So that is why my topic is little things that make a big difference. So I can tell you a little story from a place where I hail from. I hail from a place called Tamil Nadu, where there is a peace protest a couple of years back. Why it is so special to me? I mean, there was no single organizer, no political backing. It was just because of the social media. A million people gathered. A million people gathered at the marina and they were able to reverse the ban on the Supreme, of the Supreme Court on our traditional sport. So, I would say, let's collaborate across our ecosystems, across our businesses, and across our communities. We have already disrupted the ways we work, our communications, and relationships. But we, we need to take the ownership of our ultimate resource, which is planet. Save the Earth, because we don't have a planet B. Jai Hind. Wanna come?